Mark Selby to break. So Mark Selby knows all about his opponent. He played so well though from 3-1 down to see off Dave Gilbert. Came alive as ever when everything was against him. Best of 11. Yes, of course, for Mark Selby, he's got to defeat the two players who have beaten him in the first two Home Nations events. Yan Bing Tao, as you pointed out, did so just the other day in the English, and David Gilbert knocked him out in Belfast. So th these little hurdles put ahead of you uh, have to be negotiated. It's not only the opponent, it's what they've already done to you. So Mark would not have looked on this as an easy group at all. And no one who plays Yan Bing Tao thinks he's an easy player to beat. No, of course, he's not had long since he beat Shaw Murphy. It's only around about an hour. Which is not ideal, let's be honest, to play best of 11 against a world champion. So there's something for both players to think about, and there's you know, not so much mountains to climb, but a lot riding on tonight. Uh, safety shot back up the table is not easy here with reds on either side which can be hit on the way back up. And this is where Bing Tower, he's kind of bamboozled a few players, I think, because you think of him as a youngster, which he is. The youngest player at, in the top flight. But he doesn't play like a youngster. He plays like with a very old head. He's very patient. He waits for his chances. He's a born winner. And quite frankly, I, I do believe players haven't quite got to grips with his game yet. He's beaten everybody. He's beaten Ronnie O'Sullivan. On the Home Nations events already this season. So, Mark knows the task ahead of him. He gives nothing away either, does he? He's completely inscrutable, <laughs> Yan Bing Tao. Yeah, he's uh, had a great year, of course, won the Masters, one of our biggest tournaments on the circuit to get into this event. And when Ding Jun Wee's points come off after the UK Championship, if he doesn't have a good run at York, Yan Bing Tao will be the number one ranked Chinese player. A very fine shot because one. the cue ball avoiding other reds was. The priority, the pot, of course, is one that he went for as well. Yeah, I mean, Stephen Hendry doesn't you know, offer away compliments like confetti, does he? He reckons he'll be a world champion within five years. I can see where he's coming from, because I think he's got that sort of game, in a real sturdy game you need to play on the highest stage. Doesn't seem happy with that, although he is on a red. Four. See, a lot of players would have had no problem getting in behind the blue there. The fact that he probably the red thick and the cue ball was thrown a bit wider. But not easy to keep this break going. Next red is similar to the previous one, but Further away, cue ball and object ball.
11. It's not a player that immediately goes into the bunch, as some do. I mean, there is an argument here. He could play the green off the side cushion and get the reds open. I can think of players who would play that shot. Top players. The question is, has he got a good enough control of the cue ball to keep picking off the loose reds? 15. He's on a red behind the pink, so that was pretty well played. It's a good gap to find. Sixteen. Yeah, I mean, he's only a young man. He's only 21, but he's been playing at the top level for a long time. He won the World Amateur title when he was just 14. And, of course, uh, was part of that World Cup winning pair with Show Yu Long when he was 15. Joe was 17. Came within a frame of becoming the youngest ever ranking event winner. Lost 9-8 to Mark Williams in the Northern Ireland final 20. four years ago. Where's this break leading? And it's hard to think that it's leading any further than the next ball. Unless there's a plant in there, which he's spotted. He's now straight on the blue. As I said, the reds are not in open play. So where does he go from here? 15. If there's a couple of reds in line... Well, not quite. It's left jaw 28. as you look, but it could be straightened up, I guess. But I don't think he was intent on playing it from the outset. It's just he had no choice when the there was no angle on the previous shot. He's not had a close look at this. Wow. It's all well, going well, but the cue ball should never have got anywhere near the Mark corner. I don't know which one went in first, actually. The red or the cue ball. And just to add to the agony, a red's gone over the pocket as well. Well, the red went in first, but uh, like you say, he's worked very hard and not got very far there with that. Yeah, I mean, it might not have been so bad had that red not gone over this right corner. One. <laughs> well, both players, not so much a hangover from the earlier match, but that shot was uh, very badly controlled. Someone like Selby. It, the keyboard just sort of had topspin still on it, and it threw it across wider than he hoped. Sorry. Blue, blue ball. He said, decided he's going to play the blue here. Got a clear shot at the black, obviously, which... Uh, He's not a concern if he misses a couple. The reason I mention that Max can be in tower he's put five. back in again, which he might well be. He does have a clear shot at the black, so that comes into the equation. If the miss takes place again, he'll have to hit one on the third go. And like I say, he has a clear shot at the black. He doesn't want to play it, though. Blue ball. Well, no miss. So that changes things. Five. And he will be playing the black here. I don't know quite what he's going to do with it. Because he will be given a warning here by referee Tatiana Wollaston that he must make contact with a, a 
colour. What? Didn't I? I have to warn you now. I have to call on this for the third time. You'll be afraid. It still happens a couple of times a season, two or three times. There's loose frames in that scenario. Of course, every position on the table is different. He's always going to hit the black eventually. Yeah, so if you wondered why he didn't play that shot on the black initially, well, that was why, because he knew he was leaving that red to the middle, albeit in a not easy. Drop that in and play on the pink. And here's a chance. He's got no choice but to develop reds here. Well, there's a very good chance to get the frame one with three reds in the middle of the table. He can put all his concentration into those. <laughs> Well, it would be some day, wouldn't it, if he could beat the two most recent world finalists. Already done for Sean Murphy. And looking good to win the first against Mark Selby. Yes, I mean, I'm told that at the Academy in Sheffield, the way that many players, Chinese players, British players, players from all over the world who go there, I mean, I haven't been there myself, but everyone tells me that he'd be the first there in the morning of all of them to play, and sometimes the last to leave. And that's why he's here doing this. So red and pink, and Selby needs a snooker. Twenty-two. Tough character. We're used to talking about young players and saying maybe they take on a few too many or a bit loose, don't play the percentages. Can't say that about Yan Bing Tao. Quite the opposite, in fact. Potted a terrific red, though, didn't he, to that left middle to get in? Yeah. I mean, it was, as I said, one that Mark didn't want to leave him, but it had to be knocked in and played so gently to the middle. Bintao, so one snooker. Which in the case of Mark Selby means this frame is not over by any means. Straight away getting the black into play, which will help him. I suppose you could get in behind the black here, but of course with four reds to hit, that would be a very that would be a great snooker for Bing Tao to miss. So he might would like to get it down to a single red or maybe even further, as it's one snooker required. Clearly he can't do anything here, but see what he can achieve. 
behind the black. Not there. Not close either. He could take a pot on the red up by the yellow. He could try and cut it in. But he knows the keyboard's running loose. He knows that the red by the brown means that there's a possible snookering attempt later on for the man he's playing. So he's being watchful. Oh, goodness me. He nearly missed it altogether. That would have been an absolute sin. As it is, Selby, chance to clear maybe three of the reds away. One. Yes, in trying to be very careful there, Bing Tao almost got himself into a bit of a tangle. Overthought the situation. Be disappointed not to be behind that red. He could have seen a real shape taking in this frame had that landed perfectly on position. It's gonna have to be a good shot now to get up to the table for a high value colour. Bit like earlier, isn't it? It's not quite settled into the not match, Selby. as was the Eight. case with Gilbert, who really was all over Selby. 3-1 up and the frame that Selby won was on the black. Gilbert missed the black to win that. Could have been a 4-0. Oh, well, this looks like 1-0 to Yambing Tao. Really showed his mettle at that Masters. I mean, it's one thing to win it, but the way he won it, Three six fives against Neil Robertson, Steve Maguire and Stuart Bingham, then a ten eight over John Higgins in the final. Eight. Robertson matches the one I really remember because in the decider there he had a, a, a useful lead and he put five colours on the cushions. <laughs> Just completely put the frame to bed. Well, well he's gone in off, seven. but he's Frank too far Bingham. in front, I think. Even Mark Selby's not going to chase this one. So, Yan Bing Tao, who's only had an hour to get ready for this match after beating Sean Murphy, has won the opening frame against Mark Selby. More great entertainment? That's just the job. Trust a Trader, sponsoring ITV4 Early Evening. Just a Trader.
Fact in our last group, Ronnie O'Sullivan against Stuart Bingham is the first match. That's followed by John Higgins against Ding Jun We were live on ITV4 at a quarter to one. But plenty still to look forward to this evening. Yambing Towers won the first frame here against Mark Selby. This is best of 11, of course, to get through to the semi finals the at the weekend frame. by Yambing the winner Tower of tomorrow's Tower. group. One. On the break off shot, Bing Tao allowed that opportunity. <laughs> I think uh, Selby might be more interested in getting the reds open here. And there is a difference between the two players. Okay, he's been unlucky. Oh. Mark Selby make won. it the wrong shot, Young but Bing, Tower, Bing Tao had a chance of that same shot in frame one. Selby so decided to take an adventurous shot, and he was a bit unlucky. He didn't quite catch the pack as he would have hoped. Touch and ball. The pink going on there means everything's very congested. Touch and ball. Oh, he's been given a touching ball. I don't know. I wouldn't quibble if it was me. Referee says so. It's certainly in his interest. Looked at it twice. I don't know why. How much further he'd want to take it. It's touching. Well, the point is, even if it isn't touching now, it was called as touching. So it was perhaps touching at the time. It was touching when I had the look. One word. Time, why? Why would you worry? Touchable. Let's just move on. It was interesting you pointed out that match at the Masters, which he won, where he put everything safe in the decider. <laughs> it was very memorable. But the other thing about the Masters and uh, performances of Yan Bingtao, of course, he made his highest break in the deciding frame against Stephen Maguire, 1-4-1. One, one, so that was the other side of the coin. So we really are seeing a player who's got very many ways that he can win. That was equally as impressive in a totally different way. Yeah, and in the uh, Northern Ireland Open recently in Belfast, he beat Ronnie O'Sullivan, who won their sixth frame to force a decider with a wonder clearance. And you think, you know, he's probably going to win the decider, but Yan Bing Tao stood his ground. Again, displaying that mental s toughness that you need at this sport. I think the final point I'd make on Yan Bing Tao is that many youngsters from wherever in the world they play the game, homegrown in the UK or overseas players, they can be overawed by playing leading players. They're almost beaten before they start. That's 
psyche of the game, but clearly that's not the case with Yan Bingtao. Quite the opposite, he plays his best snooker against the best players. He wants to play the bottom red, but he's just concerned he just knocked the black in, which uh, obviously is avoidable. I don't know if the black will pass the other red anyway. But he didn't want to play off the bunch. I think he's pretty close to being a plant, isn't it? Depends how he hits the, the red. Yeah, he just flicked the other red on the way through. Stop it going in. Definitely a root in behind the yellow here from this angle on this safety shot. Uh, not quite, but it's still a very well weighted shot. Keep anybody there for long enough, you're doing well. straight in behind the green but it was still a, a nice area that he attempted to get the cue ball there Selby simple one cushion escape I say simple not that easy but it's just not a complicated shot Of course, it's a new venue for the Champion of Champions this year here in Bolton. I know a lot of the people here have been coming every day and uh, enjoying the week so far. Of course, we had, in the end, a bit of a runaway for Judd Trump on the first night, but last night was a real classic between yeah. Karen Wilson and Neil Robertson. And I think all the sort of talk backstage suggests this could be a close one as well. looking down the line of the shot David he can get to reds but to get a thin edge of a red and head back to bog it doesn't look very easy to me maybe on that right side of the top red but he's got to avoid a few others there is a route it's got to be found he's got the answers isn't he at the moment I know that's not a threatening safety shot but occasionally you just have to get distance between the balls that's what he did This should be the kind of battle that that man will relish. But again, it's been telling you're not quite so sure.
so we're uh, nine minutes since the ball was potted of course Selby potted that red then the brown went into the pack but not the pink in well eventually Mark Selby wins the battle just thinking about some of the great safety players we've seen over the years Ray Reardon Steve Davis and John Higgins, real top tacticians, and Silby is definitely in that stamp. One. And this opportunity was very hard earned. Yeah, one of his great assets, I think, is his concentration. You know, he can really stick with the safety. He's patient, he earns the chance, and then when it comes along, invariably, he makes a big break. Now, we'll see how he gets on here. The black tied up, but it's other big colours to go at. Seven. Fourteen. It's never easy to win a frame with the, the black ball completely tied up as it is here, but Mark is in a position to get 20. quite a long lead with what's available. Two, one. A bit of noise backstage, not sure what it is, but it's just briefly disturbed Mark's concentration. Twenty-eight. Seems any time anyone from the ITV snooker team speaks to Mark Selby, they remind him that he's not won a tournament on this channel, myself included. There's no obvious reason for it, and there's no obvious reason why it will continue. I think the sore point from Mark's point of view is, is such big events, aren't they? Big prize funds. Not only this event, but the fact that we 34. have the Kazoo Series where you get all the top players on the one-year list culminating in the Tour Championship right up his street, isn't it? Long matches, big prize fund. The elite of the game, which he certainly is in that category.
other thing, Dave, of course, is as far as the champion of champions is concerned, he's always been in it. <laughs> That's because he wins something every year. Four, two, one. Four, two, two. Yeah, there's only actually five players who've played in every one since 2013 when this was first held. Mark Selby, John Higgins, Judd Trump, Neil Robertson, Sean Murphy. Ronnie O'Sullivan missed one year. Uh, just got short of pace there. The, a couple of reds. He would like to have been further down because he's got a choice. But from here, he's still on the top red. But going into the other red, I don't want to push it safe. Oh, that's very 49. good. That's really well controlled, actually. Nice shot. Forty-nine. But with the Five reds pretty much tied up. And whatever he scores here, he will need something of 55. those. Put at least one of them to win the frame. Certainly to make it safe. I'm not saying that Bingtail would be able to clear up with the balls are by any means. Only one visit. But he's not quite out of the frame yet. Fifty-six. Well, that's uh, again I'm not quite right, but problem with this shot. If should he miss 62. it, he'll probably leave it over the pocket. Been going in along there fairly comfortably, I think. Would have seen. Still got to be accurate. Yeah, he was never going to overcut it. If he's going to miss it, it was going to be to the bottom jaw. So he had a, a nine minute spell with nothing being potted. Mark Selby won the safety duel. He needs this blue. It should be one each. Yeah, so two very enjoyable frames. Tactical. Mark Selby, 68. Carry on. Selby didn't mind rolling the red over the pocket because the black is not available, so as soon as he takes a lower value colour, of course, Bing Town needs an extra snooker, so that was clever. Of course, in was better than over the pocket. Oh, the black's available now, all right. I'll try and do that again, oh. Dave. Mark Selby, 7. Well, he's played a very positive shot. He's been unlucky to knock the black in. Of course he has, and he's conceded the frame. It was a good 68 nonetheless from Mark Selby. So this match all square. It could be really close this all night. It's one each.
Best of 11 here this evening Thank for a place you, in the semi finals of the Mark Kazoo Selby's Champion of Champions. One each between Mark Selby and Yan Bing Tao. Selby played a good frame. He won the safety battle. He made 68, which is effectively the winning break. Mark Selby won three titles last season, of course, the World Championship. The most celebrated of them. He was in four finals. He was in the shootout final, which seems unusual for him. You don't associate him necessarily with shot clock snooker, but uh, lost out there to Ryan Day. Shows, I think, his versatility. Has left a potential red here for Yan Bing Tao at the start of the frame. Oh, what a thunderous pop. One. See more and more now that the break off shot doesn't seem to be much of an advantage. He was playing into a good area and he got a nice kiss, but either way, it's hard to think that Five. he wouldn't be on something. So he played it well. Six. That was a shot where the simple thing of getting to the top side of the blue makes the world of difference. An easy shot now for the next red. Eleven. Twelve. It's not a particularly good angle on the black. He should be all right, but he didn't want to be where he is. That is the worst angle to have. Just off straight top side. And as a consequence, it's drifted further out of position. But this next shot going into the Nine. bunch really could be key. Twenty-one. No, he wouldn't have minded that red stay near the pocket, I think. If he's going to play the black, he's going to drift away. Potentially down to the bulk end. I thought he would go into the bunch a bit, a bit more pace there and try and take more of a risk. You get two points. You can only play one colour. With another one. He's got his own way of playing, hasn't he? Let's be honest. Twenty-six. And there's a formula that one of the masters, one of the big events of the snooker calendar. Twenty-seven. Once again, you must consider going into these surely off the green. Quite a big target. There's a red out which might help him if he doesn't break the reds nicely. He's incredibly unlucky there. He's on a red actually up to the yellow pocket which might keep the break alive. Yes that any risk but he played it well <laughs> so 
Yeah, but he didn't need anything there. Buckham already was playing, which seemed unlikely to leave on. And this is a, an adventurous sort of a break. Ball never really under complete control, the cue ball anyway. But on he goes. Thirty-seven. Yeah, it certainly seems that he backs himself to get the what looked like pressure pots. And he misses that one. Amazing. Young Bintal, thirty-seven. Well, he got away from the shot quite quickly. He knew he was with hampered queuing. Maybe annoyed about it. He's made a good break, but I suppose, like anything, if you don't keep getting on balls, something eventually has to give. Twenty-four. Well, clearly a lot rests on those three reds in the middle of the table. Thirty-one. Of where they pot. I think the bottom one might pot to the left middle, which means the other two would get into open play, so he might not have to shift them. And the other thing, does it even go to the right corner? Something he's looked at, he would be better off if he doesn't have to play the cannon, of course. Hmm, I think it will just creep past. Well, I've got a feeling he's finishing that bad angle that Bintel was left with, which in a few shots' time resulted in him breaking down. So he had to play on it in the middle. So the next shot's a big one. Thirty-nine. Mark Selby, thirty-nine. Well, he expected him to get it, but it felt like not quite the last piece of the jigsaw, but certainly everything else would have been on from there on. And there is a part of in the back of your mind thinking this is the shot, which probably wins me the frame. And 
in this case might lose him the frame one both players made one quite serious error in this frame and of course, it doesn't matter if you win the frame after that, it's the player that loses it has to think about it. Seven. Fifteen. Now, it's a question now, can he just hold for the yellow or does he have to use the bolt cushion because the latter can be the one way this shot can go wrong. Yeah, a little delicate hold makes all the difference and now it should be plain sailing. All he needs is yellow and green to get to the snooker's required stage. Twenty. Twenty. Yeah, and as you say, he could forget about his own miss when he was just slightly hampered earlier on. He pulled out some great pots prior to that to keep the break going. So he'll be unable to knock the red into the middle. Yan Ming Tao is just very calm taking these. Doesn't seem to mind about the reputation of his opponents because he's building a reputation of his own. 29. And he's becoming harder and harder to beat, that's for sure. 34. Forty. So he'll be at his chance. But it's Shambing Tower. And Shambing Tower. He goes back in front here. One frame to come before the mid session interval. Yan leads Selby 2 1.
2-1-2 Yambing Tao against Mark Selby. If you've got any questions or queries about the snooker, hashtags ITV Snooker Frame four. and Champ of Champs. Yambing Tao to break. So the last frame before the mid-session, Yambing Tao looking to open a two-frame lead. Mark Selby looking to peg him back. Yeah, three very interesting frames so far. The odd mistake, but mostly very good match play from both players. But again, the break-off shot that leaves an opening opportunity here. It's time for Selby. They've been knocking them in off this break-off. Of course, it's not an easy shot by any means, but at this level, players do knock them in. One. Beautifully played. And again, I can understand why the likes of Mark Williams have adopted a break-off shot to just drop into the bunch, because you're not going to leave one very often at all. It always used to be that you would opt to break off if you won the toss in a match of any length, because it was meant to be an advantage. But Eight. as I say, I don't know if it is. Your opponent pops one every time off your break, it can't be an advantage. Nine. Fourteen. One of Selby's great strengths, I think, is to be apparently untroubled by whatever's just happened in a match. So he had his chance to 15. win that last frame, but now it's on to this one. Well, I think at this game you've got two choices, Dave, haven't you? Whether you dwell on what's happened before or just get on with it. Whether it be a bad shot or a piece of bad running. Not easy to say, but not so easy to do always. This is a real stretch, isn't it? Goodness me. You've got to have something touching the floor. And as you saw there, he just had his toe against the floor. Not seen ever seen a player actually called for a foul for not having anything touching the ground. Tatiana looking to make sure... That's the case here. Yeah, I guess it could only happen if you sort of slipped at the last minute. Ended up in mid-air. If that happened here, I think missing the ball would be the least of your worries. It was a perfectly legal shot. Yep, toe met carpet. Thirty-one. 
one moment, Mark, please. Seems to me as if he's made sure that the spot is held one way or another, so Pink won't get in the way of this next shot. He's going in line. It has to go somewhere, of course, so where it goes is below its spot, along that line. So again, the key to this frame will be how he gets this bunch of reds open. Thirty-eight. Perhaps a fraction straight to make it easy to get into the bunch here. May have to play on the loose one. Players can generate an angle from not much on these fast cloths, but he hasn't got a lot to play with here. well. Forty-five. You're just <coughs> off straight there. They did well to get into that bunch. A little bit tricky the next shot. You just get the centre ball striking and the pink's not really in the way. Forty-six. This afternoon, Mark Selby made his career century number seven hundred. Only the sixth player to made that many in competition. Fifty-one. Fifty eight. This is a proper match, isn't it? These two, world champion against the Masters champion. Two of our biggest events. Looking as if it's going to be hard to split them. Going into the mid-session interval. The odd mistake, but it's just the, quite a rarity. Top safety and good break building. It's all there. Yeah, the only real mistake in this frame was the break-off. To say Selby got in off 65. his break off in frame two and in frame four, so if Yana's has got anything to think about, it's doing something about that because you just can't afford to give away chances from the outset. This is frame ball, this is proper punishment, isn't it? <laughs> Very quick kill, just nine 70. minutes to get to the snooker's required stage. Sets it up very nicely for the second half of the night. Yeah. 73. Fine match play all round. You invariably find that the ball stay in pretty orthodox positions when you get players who play this way. 78. A match that could go very deep. I wouldn't really like to pick the winner from what I've seen.
Mark Selby, so he stepped in first chance he got right. and made 78 and Mark Selby has levelled up and as I said right at the start we always thought this was likely to be a close match that's how it's bearing out right now they go to the interval all square Mark Selby and Yan Bing Tao level at 2-2 two -two.
Well, as you would expect at the Champion of Champions, quality snooker here tonight. High percentage pot success for both players. Really evenly matched uh, in this group semi-final after four frames, two apiece effectively. A best of seven frames to come. Uh, with me, uh, Ken and Alan. We said before this match, Ken, two very similar players, very yeah, evenly yeah. matched players. Mark Selby, the world champion. Yan Bing Tao, the yeah, Masters yeah. champion. Um, it's difficult to call it at this stage, It is, it? yeah, yeah. No, no quarter given between the two. Very tough, hard match play snooker. Really good safety from both players. Uh, some good long pots in there. Only one big break, uh, but it's been high quality snooker. It hasn't been a lot of easy misses, you know, and, and every chance that they're getting, they're, they're having to work hard for it. But as we said before, this could go right to the worst. 6 5 either way. I said Selby, Alan said Bing Tail, and it has all the hallmarks of that. Yeah, the pot success 93, 94%, but Selby's safety 87%. I mean, that's phenomenal, isn't it? It also tells you that he's had to play a lot of it, you know, <laughs> but uh, there was a really interesting run in frame three I want to show. We talk a lot about Yan Bing Tao being difficult to read, difficult to play against. want to show you why. He's got this red here. Listen, he can pick a spot, roll it in, low of straight for the next red, but he stuns it and leaves himself high, higher straight, like you see there. So he's got a little deep screw shot to play, pots it kind of thin, loses the cue ball, right? So Mark Selby would be perked up in his chair thinking, uh oh, he might go wrong here. Pots a nice red tier, then he doesn't play the black, gets two for the price of one, yes. But well, just when you think he's going to come a cropper, in goes an amazing pot in the long blue. He's five out of five so far tonight in his long game, which is amazing. But this is why he's so tough to read. Pots another good red, lands beautiful in the green, comes down in amongst them. Then he's got a Yan Bing Tao type of shot, a long straight one that you know he's going to hit middle of the cue ball. Red's going to find middle of the pocket. Again, not a problem. Then he's got a dead easy red, not a lot to do with the cue ball, pinks a sitting uh, duck waiting for him, as is the blue, and he yeah, misses a red that you can't believe. He's the only top player in the game that would miss that type of shot. He's so tough to read, but we know he's got other qualities and makes it very difficult for his opponent. Seems to be a really instinctive player as well. Yeah. You know, he, he, his shot selection is interesting. It is, yeah. I mean, Stephen Hendry famously said last season, I can't work him out. I don't know whether he's a pot or a safety player. And yeah, he, he, he sort of can lose the cue ball, but he comes out with those amazing pots. Uh, but he's a very, very clever player, you know. And even though every now and again he'd miss one that you don't expect, you know, it'll come out of the blue. But, you know, he's still only 21 years of age and he's still, you know, he's one of the top players in the game. And he's not phased by playing Max Selby, the world champion. In fact, I think he's absolutely relishing it because... He's learning so much playing these top players all the time, on the big events, on the TV, and he's putting it up to them. I think what it is sometimes, he's very, very good at the difficult stuff. Mm. And sometimes when it's fairly straightforward for a top player down and in amongst the pink and black, he makes the odd positional error. Um, and that's where he's going to come a cropper, maybe in the end. Here's another uh, carbon copy of the red that Jan knocked. Sorry, this was a similar red. But that's been a feature actually tonight. The break off shot, I'm going to be interested to see if anyone mixes it up because a red's disappeared every time. This is a fantastic yeah, this shot, is a, Ken. This that a, shows the Q power, doesn't it? Yeah, that's a beautiful shot. I mean, the pack is very tightly knitted there, but he, he got enough uh, charge on the cue ball just to bring it out and he made a wonderful 78 break. It's, it's very evenly matched this. It's fascinating at the same time. It is, and as I said, effectively a best of seven. Mm. So. You know, we're thinking this one might go all the way to yeah, decide him. Yeah. I would say put the kettle on, Jill. We're going to uh, <laughs> put our feet up and enjoy the rest of it because I'm loving every minute of it. This is, this is Anne Allen, I'm sure, as well. This is our type of game. I absolutely love this type of snooker. Yeah, I, I, I'm no closer. It's going to be 6-5. <laughs> we both called 6-5. No reason to change any mind so far. <laughs> we'll stick the kettle on. You can stick the kettle on, but don't be late back because it's coming up after the break. We will have the conclusion of this Group 2 final. A place in Saturday, Saturday night semi-final of the Champion of Champions at stake.
Tomorrow, the final group stage of the Champion of Champions sees Ronnie O'Sullivan take on Stuart Bingham, followed by John Higgins and Ding Junmi. What a lineup! A superb Thursday of live snooker gets underway at 12.45 here on ITV4. Right now, though, the conclusion of today's group final. Mark Selby has been playing catch-up all day. First against David Gilbert, and he's now in level terms with Jan Bing Tao, who will make it into Saturday night's semi-final. Uh, to take us through this one, Stephen Hendry's alongside Phil Yates in the commentary box. First though, here's Tahir Hajjal to reintroduce the players. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the arena, Yan Bing Tao and Mark... Okay, the first four frames were quite rapid. They took 59 minutes of total playing time. That's not slow by any Thank measure. Frame five. But I think Mark if Selby this goes frame. quite tight, it will become very involved and neither will want to give an inch. I don't know if these two players saw a monitor before they went out to play this last mini session. If they did, they might have seen that promo for tomorrow. What a group it is. And so whoever wins this evening is guaranteed to have a very tough task in the semi-finals on Saturday. That's the champion of champions for you. No hiding place. No, and Yan Bing Tao proved last season by winning the Masters that he's quite comfortable in this type of company. Masters, obviously, for the top 16 players in the world. But an excellent reply to Mark Selby's safety, safety oh, shot there, Yan Bing Tao, and it's forced. Yan Bing Tao for an error. We'll go back. Um, Rob, can we? Oh, Paul, sorry, can we have a look, please? It's not there yet. Sorry, okay. Just a touch nearer the cushion, only a fraction. Touch nearer the cushion? Yeah. And just a little bit this way. Premier's Marcus Chair, Paul Collier, providing assistance in terms of redirecting the white. It might seem trivial to the uninitiated, but a millimetre here or there makes a, a big difference.
he really has become excellent match player. Yan Bing Tao. Very, very good in all departments. Okay, might not have the maybe the flair, the break building ability of Ding Jin Wei, but if I was forced to pick who was gonna who's more likely to win the world championship, it'd be the man in the arena at the moment. I still think Ding Jun Wei is the better snooker player, but whether he's still got the hunger to do it at this level remains to be seen. He's in that group that Phil mentioned tomorrow. I mean, John Higgins, the man in form, has been in the last two finals. I was actually just looking at the provisional rankings earlier, Stephen. It could be a, a seminal moment at the UK Championship. Every likelihood, unless Ding goes very, very deep, that Yang Min Tao will go above Ding and become the highest ranked Chinese player. It's a brilliant shot. Okay, he hasn't got a stick up on the ground, but it really was top drawer safety shot. There aren't many players out there who can out Selby Selby. But Jan is one of them. John Higgins, another, of course, as he showed with that otherworldly display in winning the Players' Championship last season. Yeah, he's got tremendous patience for a player so young. He was very, very attacking when he first came on the scene, but in those five years, he's just become a more complete snooker player. on the precipice. Tatiana Williston looking over to see the position of the cue ball. Trying to breathe heavily, I'd drop in. Well, we're in a football ground, and I think we've got a couple of goalkeepers.
Nice a choice of reds, either corner pocket. Is horrible. Brutal fluke. If you're Mark Selby, sat in your chair, look at what's been left on. But Yang Bing Tao's got to show no mercy, no guilt about that. Take advantage. Could be a long night. The run of the balls could change. Hey. Nine. I think it's right for etiquette's sake to acknowledge a fluke, of course it is, but don't be over the top, because really, you're happy. Yeah, you acknowledge the fluke and that's where it ends. You get back to business. Sixteen. Seventeen. Chose to play the more aggressive shot. He knew he was bound to be on at least the red to, to left corner, so took the, the opportunity to bring another couple of reds into play. Good shot. Very rarely plays with any side, Yang Bing Tao. He's very much a plain ball player, which I don't know whether it was a deliberate thing to, to do, because obviously in these slick cloths, if you flick the slightest bit of unwanted side on, you're going to miss anything. Very rarely do you see him play with extreme side. Only capitalising on a fluke can be really important. Throughout the generations there have always been a a group of players who have found it very difficult to absorb the, the perceived injustice of being on the receiving end of a fluke. 29. And Stephen, you'll know what I'm coming from here. When you're playing one of those players and you know who they are, when you have a fluke, you try even harder to make it hurt all the more. Late great Willie Thorne. God bless him. Didn't like a fluke against him. I remember he used to he said to Steve Davis once back in the 80s, why do you get so many flukes, Steve? Why are you so lucky? And Steve's answer was, Well, I play more frames, Willie. 37. Yeah, I'm just going about his business. Again, nothing too flashy. Just getting the job done. Saying, very much making that cue ball do as little work as possible. 45. Fifty-two. 
Sixty. Sixty one. No need to go into those four reds. He'll play for the open red after this black. If he gets a colour with that red, it'll be enough to put him into snookers required. Just this red to mathematically win the frame, but as we know with Mark Selby, you want to put at least the black with this red and possibly another another red just to stop Mark Selby coming back to the table. Because we 69. know that could elongate the frame by a good 10 15 minutes. Yes, against most players, the equation is. Frame ball plus one or two against Selby, it's probably frame ball plus three. Mm. Sixty-nine. Four snookers required, Catching but ball. I think Mark Selby, because there's five reds left, or the brown is, may come back to the table. May not. See how he feels. Jan Bintao, seventy-six, and the frame. Yes, it was a borderline decision for Selby. I wouldn't have been surprised if Stephen said either way. As it is, direct from a fluke, Jan Bingtao makes his highest break of the match and leads. Another entertaining pro. This evening, our quarter-final pits two players who, in many respects, in terms of discipline, in terms of temperament, in terms of patience, are cut from the same cloth. Yan Bing Tao, a younger version of the current world champion Mark Selby. Both give everything all the time.
Well, uh, Red did go towards the right corner. I thought Mark for a second was going to repeat the fluke from the previous frame from Yan Bing Tao, but didn't. He has left a choice of three reds, but get on a colour. I'm not sure how much you can get to the cue ball. I think one to left corner. Looks the best option to get the cue ball back up the table. This this is very tricky with a spider. was an example when it was imperative to be able to hit the middle of the cue ball. Very easy to impart on wanted side when you're aiming down on the cue ball as you are when you're using the spider. to go in the black spot. What a result. Seth. That really has made this great chance to score heavily again in this frame. Two frames ahead the Eight. first time. Just short with the cue ball, needed to come off the cushion to be been level with this red, so you just got to give this a wee bit of tension. Yeah, no problem. Fifteen. He always plays at the same pace, that's another one of his attributes. Never sort of slows down or rushes, it's always a very even pace around the table. Same amount of waggles with a cue before he strikes it. Over the years you see Thank young you players and when they come onto the Pro Tour and get on the main table, quite often, although they would probably never admit it or even recognise it, but they have a, a degree of imposter syndrome. They feel uncomfortable out there. He never has. 22. From the moment that he and Zhou Yu Long won the World Cup for China B when Zhou was 17 and Yan was 15, being out there on the main match table, to him, seems like second nature. It was a very, very short apprenticeship. Twenty-seven. Again there, he's played that red in the middle, screwed the cue ball back with no side whatsoever. And consequently, he's not got the best angle on his pink. A lot of players would have played a wee bit of right hand side just to get the, bring the cue ball further down the table, make sure that an angle in the pink. Again, nothing fancy with the cue ball. Just a basic stun off the cushion. 34. <coughs> Yan Bin Tao, 34. One thing led to another there. Playing the shot that way, the only red he was going to leave was the one he went for. And at one point, I thought he had left it. But the pink has come to his rescue. A 
I don't think I've ever suggested this, but I think Mark Selby needs to play more attack and safety. He needs to open the reds up. I think Jan's quite comfortable playing this type of game. He looks very comfortable out there. I think Selby has to do something to sort of change the pattern of this match. Some aggressive safeties where he's bringing all the reds into the open. Another mistake, and one that Selby, already 34 points adrift, can ill afford. It was a perfect angle in the blue there. A lot of players would have gone into the bunch there. Six. Not with great pace, but towards the left side of the bunch as we look. Push through the red that's on the left side towards that left corner pocket. He's got the angle to do so Seven. again. So the red that's on the pink spot, just to sort of the left of that as we look. Sort of gentle cannon into the main bunch. Should push a red towards the left corner. Perfectly played. If he's on the pink, he's lucky. That was unnecessary, a big gap to find. Yeah, I think that's... He's, if anything, his, his Achilles heel, that's it. He, he throws in a really unexpected bad shot now and then. Like an easy miss, or as you've seen there, just a unforced error. Absolute shocker of a shot, really. Doesn't show much emotion, but he is showing it there. He's disgusted with that shot. Look at the margin of error he's got. Look at the area he's got to land in to be on the pink. Brown ball. Jan Bintao, 13. Now, something similar happened this afternoon. Stephen against Sean Murphy played a poor positional shot, deprived him of position on the black off its spot. Now, normally a younger player particularly would be so aggrieved that they would not put full concentration into the next shot. Well, Jan did, laid a great snooker. And what does he do there? Realise that that moment's passed, he's got to get on with it, and he leaves Selby very awkward queuing. Yeah, he's got a fantastic temperament. 
Again, that's one of the reasons why I think he's going to be here for many years to come. I fancy him to, to win that World Championship within the next five years. I think he's got the game that's tailor-made for the Crucible. Yeah, when you play as good a shot as Jan played when he messed up the positions, right? you go back to your seat, you not quite, but you almost feel as good as if you'd actually cleared up when you were at the table because you're almost proud of yourself that you were able to gather your thoughts and play such a good shot. One. And he's back to the table quickly with another chance. And also two reds going on side cushions helps in the sense that Jan knows if he does make a mistake here, it's going to be very unlikely that Selby can clear up in one visit. So that dilutes pressure as well. Six. Seven. He's landed short in the blue, but only because he had to play a force and stun shot. If he'd played the screw shot, Cuba would have gone in the right middle pocket. So he's actually done not bad to get the cue ball there. Well. 59 in front, 67 on, so this is frame ball. Well, he could Jan stand Vintel there 12. all night and Mark try and repeat before. that shot and not do it. That white went into the middle pocket at a ridiculously acute angle. Look at this. Wow. One of the more extraordinary in-offs you'll ever see. Well, Mark Selby is 55 behind with 59 on. He can still win this frame, but well, this table is ugly. Bonus of black being the bulk end of the table, going for this red. And the one thing about Jan, he's very good at nursing a lead. I remember one frame in the Masters when he captured that title. Every single colour was on a cushion. Most of them by design. Yeah, it's another sign of his, his patience. You know, he doesn't get impatient to get the frame over with. He's quite prepared to wait for the chance to win it. Doesn't care how long it takes. Well, it's been a mild November day, but Mark Selby is cold. Cold in a snooker sense, he hasn't potted a ball for 32 minutes. That's actual playing time. It does not include the interval.
Well, he's riding his luck. But I suppose when you've gone in off like that, you deserve some. One. The potting drought is over. Nine. Well, we've seen Mark Selby win some incredible frames in his career. This would, this would be another one. I've said, the table is ugly at the moment. There's no way he's clearing up to win it at this visit. But you know, his aim will be to just get right back 16. into the frame. Sure, if he's got the angle to pot this red and play topspin and move the other red off the cushion, it'd be a risky shot to play. Because in playing that, a lot of the times the cue ball can stay on the cushion, move the red, but the cue ball stays tight in the cushion. But he would have the pink. It all depends what angle he's got on this red. Just too much angle. 17. But obviously <coughs> imperative he gets a colour here and well neither. Or gimmies. He misses. He needs a snooker. This is a tough black. Mark Selby, 17. One snooker needed. Selby's extricated himself from this kind of predicament on many occasions, but where the, the balls are, even if he does get the four penalty points or above, so many problems to solve. And you know, Yang Bing Tao isn't going to do anything rash or self-destructive. Selby just glancing at the scoreboard, making absolutely sure 
how he stands. They're even apologising these days, Stephen, for, for good kisses. This statistic is not kept, so I think it's just my observation, I would say. Over the course of the last ten years, no one has won more frames after requiring a snooker than Selby. Don't know whether that's true, but I think it is. I suspect it is. already the lengthiest frame of the match. Many of Selby's fellow professionals might get a little agitated in this situation. Not Jan.
clever shot. If that black near the pink, that's now quite a nice target. Yeah, this red could go close to the green pocket. No, thinner contact, but that pink and black now is a lovely target for Mark Selby if he can get the chance. Selby, user of a pouch for his joke. Can Mark Selby get that cue ball behind pink and black this time? Send the red back up the table in some sort of stun. Send the cue ball over to that right side of the table. It went the other way. It was supposed to be, but I think it would have been a snooker anyway. <clears throat> and Jan being put through the Selby ringer, all because of that unlikely in off. Hardly seemed room for the white to go in. That was on frame ball. Seems like an age ago. <laughs> Jan will not want to see this ever again. Going there, you simply can't imagine it would drop, but he just, just fell in. And now, Stephen, Selby's got the opportunity to remove the awkward green. So if he does, and eventually gets a snooker, the balls will be a lot more friendly for him to clear up. Yeah, he's just got to be careful the green doesn't actually go in its own pocket here. I'm sure he's, Selby's too clever for that. Yeah, it was a plant, that's why I had to hit the red so thin. As you say, I would have liked to have taken the green away. Well, at least he's made it marginally easier. Very good shot. Just a reminder, 35 points on the table. Selby's deficit is 38, so he needs one snooker, but he's currently in one.
In early 2020, Yan Bing Tao started a match. It was the semi-final of the Welsh Open. As a teenager, ended the match as a 20-year-old. He celebrated his birthday, or at least the, the clock coming around to midnight during the contest. No birthday here, but midnight could come into the equation. Especially if more frames like this develop. He's so granite, no Mark Selby, isn't he? But even though he's not, okay, he's a snooker here, it's not difficult to hit, but even when he's not getting snookers, he's, he's keeping the red safe. Yeah, we're doing well to keep it safe this time because he's been snookered back by his opponent. Considered Karma. Yan Bintai. Yan Bintai went him off into that pocket. Then, much later, Selby left the last red and missable to the same target. Yan Bintai was delayed, but he does lead 4 2. to Bolton and the Kazoo Champion of Champions. It's day three. The third group in this event will be resolved this evening. Both players have popped out of the arena. Mark Selby coming back in. It gives me the opportunity to tell you about the match so far if you're just joining us. Basically, Yan Bing Tao won a scrappy opener. Selby made 68 to win the second. The third, he might well have won that as well, but he missed a red to middle. Thank you, Frank. That was a surprise. Seven. Mark Yan Selby made 47. Great. Selby, though, responded with 78 in the fourth. As for the fifth frame, Yan looked good in making a, a 76 break, admittedly from an outrageous fluke. And then we've just seen that disjointed staccato drawn out sixth. Most worrying thing for Mark Selby, okay, the fluke played a big part in Yan Bing Tao going 3 2 ahead, but he has been outplayed here. As I mentioned earlier, he needs to change something the way this match is going. So Yan Bing Tao goes 5 2 ahead. It made it very difficult for Mark Selby. Wow, he hit that well. He really hit that well. 
he looked right down the barrel of that shot and I thought he had it when he hit the cue ball. One. He's so resolute, Selby. He displayed that this afternoon in coming back from 3-1 down to beat Dave Gilbert 4-3. And he needs to be stubborn again. Well, he couldn't have picked a cue ball up with his hand and placed it any better. Six. Perfect, just to cannon that red just to the right of the black. Seven. Fourteen. Fifteen. Use the full pocket there to get the maximum angle. Went into the bunch. My, hit that well. He really got so much work in the cue ball. Actually, it makes 20. contact with the first red, and the cue ball still got. The raz on it to pull it to the right side of the table. Struck it perfectly. 23. Maybe tempted to go into the bunch again here. Twenty-eight. A foot short this time. Should get the pot. Cue ball's a little bit tricky. He's got to find the gap between red and pink. Yeah, nicely played. Twenty-nine. Again, he's got the option. Playing the cue ball virtually over the pink spot into the middle of those six reds. Perfectly played. It's, I don't know whether he wants to play the red to the left corner, but I don't know whether the cue ball is going to be travelling towards the red on the cushion. Whether they can avoid it. Thirty-five. No, the frame is mercy. Great visit this, Mark Selby, the opening red was excellent, cued it beautifully.
It's just off straight in this red, that's why he hasn't played it. If it was dead straight, he'd have been down playing it, he's probably on the black by now. But because it's just off straight, cue ball's gone further away from the black and more tricky or easier to snooker yourself behind the red. It's to the right of the black. That's why he's played the percentage 49. shot, taking the cue ball back up for the blue. Important time of the match this for Mark Selby, not a time you want to be taking risky shots. Shots that could go wrong. Fifty-four. Fifty-five. Selby's third half century of the match. Sixty-two. Sixty-three. Yeah, just a reminder to his opponent that he's, he's still there, still around. They have outplayed me the last two frames, but this is still what I can do when I get my chance. 70. 71. Of course he made a, a one four seven break in the Champion of Champions a few years ago. Didn't receive 17. a penny for it. Seventy nine. He used to mention that all the time. Now he's much better, only a couple of times a week. Well that's savage, isn't it? The one four seven <laughs> don't get in it. Anything for it. Eighty four. This has been a wonderful visit to the table. Never looked in any 85. danger, really, at any point. Ninety-one. He's already compiled the highest break of this year's tournament. One three one. The draw level at three three with Dave Gilbert this afternoon. Just enough on the table here to improve on that by a single point. <laughs> Deserved applause. 105. One hundred and seven. Of course, this is for Mark Selby, century number seven hundred and one. Arrived at that landmark seven hundredth this afternoon. Terrific numbers. One hundred and ten.
114. One hundred and nineteen. One hundred and twenty-five. Cometh the hour, cometh the man. One hundred thirty-two. So these second total points of the day, but it's not total domination. Far from it. Despite that, Yan Bingtao still leads. in this race to six. And even though Selby trails, he's made three of the four highest breaks in the match. That's a careless little shot from Yang Bing Tao. He should have been at the very least just behind the black, probably tight up against it. But I mean, he wasn't going to gain much from it. But the thing is, now he could be in a bit of trouble. The thing you don't do is leave Mark Selby an easy safety shot to play. Very surprised if Yang Bing Tao isn't glued to that bolt cushion. Seven out of ten.
All very intense, both players well aware that any kind of error could be magnified. The century in the previous frame, by the way, was Selby's third against Yan Bing Tao. The other two came in the same match in the quarterfinals of the Tour Championship back in 2020 when Selby prevailed 9-6. Yan yet to make a century against Selby. Tell you what though, it's very close in terms of total frames won over the course of all of their meetings. As it stands at the moment, Selby's won 24, Jan 20. Wow. Wow. And when he flew to red in frame five, that was that was bad, but this one was even worse. It's a absolutely vile bit of running if you're Mark Selby. How has he got away with that? Had you been the recipient of that, Stephen, the old sarcastic thumbs up would have come out there. Oh, it's all Phil. That took me as well. I can think of a few players where their head might come off when they come to the table after that happened.
it's foolhardy to downplay the influence of luck in top level snooker of course it's massively skillful but luck plays a really integral role on many occasions So will be not so fortunate. Red on, if it goes in, plenty available. One. And because he middles the cue ball so well, those shots are well, they're very easy for Yan Bing Tao. He'd been quiet for a while in terms of potting. Now, though, a golden opportunity to get the the Q arm re-lubricated. Eight. Sixteen. Yeah, it was nicely played. See the two reds that are above the cue ball. Quite easy to left himself hampered on those there or, or over hit it and snooker himself. So, although it looked like a fairly really straightforward positional shot, it was very well played. Could have gone wrong. Twenty-four. Difficult to see where he goes wrong here. I don't know. Other than Maybe a careless positional shot. Thirty-one. The other snag in this kind of situation is loss of concentration. But don't hold your breath with Jan, his concentration. No one's watertight, but he's pretty close. Thirty-two. 
पछे आई Now, these are the, the types of situations. If you're going to be competing with the very best in the game, Yan Ming Tao is well on his way to getting there. Is is making the most of these chances. Even though we come in, we're getting to the business end of this match. It it shouldn't really mean anything. I suppose it shouldn't make these chances what any more see? difficult. Really, if you've got that ability to keep composed. Could even make you play better. Watch yourself. If he's straight in the black, it looks like he can just follow through two or three inches for a red to left corner. Two reds below the black, the one to the left. He had a little bit of angle, so. Yeah, a choice of three reds there. Fifty-four. Fifty-five. I don't think I'm going to jinx him in any way, but this he's looked nailed on in this break from the very, very beginning. He looks so composed. He's had the cue ball under complete control. Sixty two. Mm, just overhit that one a little bit. Sixty seven. This red is much thinner cut than he anticipated. Good for a choice of both of these reds. Frame ball. Yeah, it's been beautiful played this break. I'll repeat what I said this afternoon, Stephen. He has that tendency to, to wear opponents down with Efficiency. No bells and whistles, no frills. No nonsense. Quality snooker. Seventy four. And it has to be said, since the interval, a couple of slices of golden fortune made a break of 76 off a fluked red in the fifth. 81. In this frame, made a real hash of a safety. And somehow, despite being right in the middle of all of the, the reds, didn't leave a single 82. thing. Eighty-nine. 
night. This would be a nice way to reply to Mark Selby's 132 in the previous frame. 97. I can make an even higher break. Ninety-eight. I'm surprised to see his highest breaking competition is only one four one. I'm sure will be one before. Gets a much higher break than that as the central comes up. Beautiful play from Yang Bing Tao. Tremendous temperament, composure. One hundred and six. Yeah, the black here plus all the colours would lead to a break that's only one short of his personal best. 113. And of course, the clearance from here would be the highest break of the tournament. 115. So we talked about Robertson getting to 800 centuries this week, Selby getting to 700, Yan Bing Tao at the age of 21 already on 113. 118. With bags of time on his side. One hundred and twenty-two. These last two century breaks from both players have been immaculate. They really have. Absolute clinics and cue ball control. One hundred and thirty-three. This game is devilishly difficult. have made it look preposterously easy. That was a tremendous response. Jan 5-3 ahead. Two up, three to play. This champion, Yan Bing Tao, has just right. produced a masterful 140 total clearance. He's very close to victory, but a cautionary tale from this afternoon. Mark Selby was two down, a possible three to play against Dave Gilbert. He pulled that one out of the fire. 
and no one here in Bolton or indeed all of you watching back home will be discounting his chances of another comeback Went for a similar red to this. Frame seven, not playing it with a pace. But equally, one as difficult when you roll them slow. But as I keep saying, when you can middle that cue ball, those shots become that so much easier. Beautiful shot. Dave Gilbert got in. First, when he was 3 1 ahead of Mark Selby. That's a very easy red. Somehow, Phil, I don't think Jan will, will do the same thing. Oh, he's got a nice angle in this red. Hey. To Flick that red away from the black here. Doesn't want to catch any of the black. Wants to get the red clean. Catches a bit of the black, he pushes it towards the cushion. Beautiful shot. Nine. It takes a lot to keep potting balls and then you get the table for a very 16. lengthy amount of time but in practice and he practices an awful lot you hear these stories of remarkable scoring feats Seventeen Just dishes up in frame after frame He does a lot of solo practice, which I think is a secret. I know it's great to be get some match practice against other top 25. players, but when you do plenty solo, it really sharpens you up, and you're that you become so used to just clearing the table whenever you get a chance, because you're doing it, you know, hour after hour in the club every day. It just becomes second nature when you're in a match. Yeah, good angle in the blue required here. He does like to pick off the loose reds. I mean, he can play the red that's just to the left of the bunch. He can play for that to left corner in such a way that he'll be able to bring more reds out into the open and potting that. I'm not sure about that choice. I'm really not sure about that choice. I think he missed a trick there. Okay. You look at the shape of the pack, the, where the cue ball, the direction the cue ball is going into the pack. Look, there's a big straight line. This was always going to happen. I think that was the wrong shot. It's the first one he's played. Jan Bintao, 38.
I suppose I should add Phil, in my opinion, played the wrong shot. I mean, if he'd played that shot right and the reds were everywhere, then it was the right shot. But Mark Selby is bang under it here. That'll help. One. Hmm, didn't see it. The hand was raised to his opponent. Is that going to be a turning point? We're always looking for them. No one has got a greater degree of fight. His well of fortitude never runs dry. Good kiss. Could be away oh. here. That's not the right cannon, or the cannon he was looking for. He's still got this red to right corner, but cue ball and object ball are very close together. Cue ball going into the rest of the reds. We have to play this red up to the far right corner. It's not too difficult, it's just a position. This is a more difficult pot. But the position is easier. So which one do you choose? Mark Selby, 11. Mm, a little nonplussed by the reaction he received there. Don't know whether he thought he got a slight kick. It certainly went thick. Surprised about something. Yeah, I thought I might have just stunned that off the side cushion instead of playing with topspin. Interesting way Yan Bing Tao played that red, didn't take any chances with it, did he? A few players might have played it at pace to try and get out for the green to the same pocket. Just dropped it in, made sure of the pot. It's got an angle in this green. Just stopped in his tracks. Has he gone too far? We'll be able to see oh. by the body language. Hmm. Tight, isn't it? Yeah, he's not on it. Reprieve from Mark Selby. Yan Bing Tao gets on that red. It could have been match over. Tower four. It's another quality safety shot. And no other mark can get an edge of this red.
Well, in the end, you could get a lot more than an edge. I'm sure he didn't think he could hit it as thickly as that. The red not in, but the cue ball. Well, that covers up the cracks. Yeah, slightly, maybe negative way of playing it. Why is the cue ball all the way back there to the bolt cushion? I think he could have played that more positively, made sure he was on a colour. So maybe the first slight signs of tension, seeing the winning line. And there's no doubt that Selby's reputation for fighting back and erasing big deficits to win somehow, there's no doubt that reputation is known by every single player on the main tour. And I think that in itself increases the pressure. Yan Bing Tao is the Masters champion. Selby is the the master of escapology. Not with that though. Not with that. Something, an insect just flew down and landed on the table as, a, as he was about to draw the cue back and play the shot. Done well to get back up off the shot. Sure, we can just, just roll this in off the cushion for the black to the left corner. One. Hit it for the same pocket and hit it beautifully, didn't he? he really did. That was played with authority. No doubt in my mind, Phil, you get a feeling that Mark Selby just out of his comfort zone playing Yan Bing Tao. He knows that he's such a hard competitor. Twenty-one snooker world at his feet. Eight. This red clears another one to the left corner. Nine. And then put on this red if he should do. Clears the way for at least a red to left middle. So no need to be playing any cannons. He's got a clear sight to the winning line here. Sixteen. Not sure if that red 17. is below the pink goes to the left corner. If not, as I say, he's got that red to the left middle. So match ball. Let's have a couple of looks at this red. Fabulous performance from Yan Bing Tao. Went four to ahead. Mark Selby threw a one-three-two total clearance at him. Came back with his own total clearance. 
and has dominated this frame as well. It's going to be back-to-back -back victories over world champions. 32. One former, the other current. This red to absolutely ice it. At the start of the season, the campaign began with the Championship Four League. Ten. He didn't win that, but he, he got through a group that really strong. You hear all these reports about how Four hard he practices. Now, when you've got discipline, when you've got dedication, you've got temperament, and you've got his ability. Boy, that's a, a tough package to overcome. Fifty-one. Fifty-three. is in a very healthy position. The one thing we needed was a, a young superstar. We've 56. got one in Yan Bing Tao. Of course, it means the ITV curse for Mark Selby continues. He will have to wait until at least 65. the World Grand Prix in December to put that to rights and capture a title in front of our cameras. Tonight, though, 71. he's not lost. Jan has won. That's the narrative. It is Mark Selby. Jan Ping Tao doubles up, wins by six frames to three. He's into the semi finals of the Kazoo Champion of Champions. After the break, analysis, and we'll hear from both players.